Thanks Thank very, much. very much. Now, as we head into the colder months, many people will see flare-ups of skin problems. So, former GP with an interest in dermatology, Dr George McCreef, is here with some advice. Good morning, Good morning. to you. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, uh, dermatology, I mean, the skin. That's something mm -hmm. that you have used studied and been interested in for many, many years. I have indeed, yeah. I think it's fascinating. And of course, it's the barrier between us and that hostile world we live in. And we all have skin and boy, does it cause problems. Yeah, it absolutely does. Now, we, as, as Andy said before, we're heading into the colder months. What concerns can we sort of expect to see emerging now? Well, as the months get colder, the air gets drier. Mm -hmm. And so, um, any moisture in the air condenses onto your wind, windscreen and your windows and things. We put central heating on, the air becomes drier. So dry skin problems like eczemas and psoriasis generally become worse in the, in the winter months. Mm -hmm. And so what you need to do is you need to cut back on things that weaken the skin's ability to hold moisture. So avoid detergents, soaps, ah. shower gels, shampoo on your skin. Uh -oh. I actually wash with an emollient. With a what, sorry? An emollient, um, a moisturiser. Which is a cream, oh. yeah. Oh, okay. So yeah. something like this Aproderm colloidal is what I would oh, wash so with. so you sort of mm. put all shower gels and soaps and anything like that to the uh, side? Very unnatural, idea. very yeah. unnatural. Um, they, our body never evolved to cope with these detergents. Uh, so if we did, we'd have fish skin, wouldn't we? So, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so instead of doing that, and, and these, these emollients, um, moisturisers, are balanced to maintain the skin's natural environment, its normal surface pH. Right, OK. okay. Uh, and then you need to step up your emollient regimen as well. So after washing, if you've got a dry skin condition, you need to put a quality moisturiser on yeah. straight afterwards. Mm. Right, so again, as an Afro-Caribbean person, my skin's normally quite dry. Always on the dry yeah, side. Yeah, it's always on the yeah. dry side. So I always make sure I moisturise every time I shower. Mm -hmm. But are you using a shower gel? I do use a shower gel. Yeah. You're going to tell me not to. Well, well I have But, for your, the, but the, what do the I use for my bits? Yeah. Um, you could use something like CeraVe moisturising um, creams. The CeraVe make a particular product just for that. Or well, there's no reason why you can't use a simple emollient. Okay. I've just got to get this right. So I put... I use that as soap. Exactly. Right, yep. OK. And they, it would they, still wash the bits that you yep. are concerned about, OK? Well, yeah, it, it, it cleans the skin and yep. it re-greases the skin and it preserves the natural environment on the skin. Soaps and detergents are drying the skin and creating a very abnormal environment. And as you get older, get to my age, your skin gets drier and drier. We just did an item about naturism. Um, do you approve of that? I mean, <laughs> having all your skin exposed to the fresh air? Absolutely. You do? Yes, yeah. Okay. Um, it's a good thing. Yeah, I think on the whole, you just don't want to burn in the sun. Yeah. Yes. So you need yes. to protect yourself from burning sun rays using a quality sunblock. But provided you're not burning, some natural sunlight is really good for you as well. Okay. Yeah. Vitamin D. Yeah, we'll there we go. The vitamin yeah. D it's we can it's get, actually more we? than vitamin D, but yeah. Oh, oh, I'm <laughs> sure it is. That's the small part I know. <laughs> you were doing well. Well done. <laughs> well done. <laughs> exactly. Uh, OK, right. Well, we've had lots of questions for you, as you can imagine. Amanda says, is my skin affected by the menopause? She sent a little picture here. I've been struggling with facial skin problems on my chin for about a year and I've tried every steroid cream going. I've had scalp dermatitis and psoriasis for about eight or nine years and it feels like the same thing. Red, itchy and bumpy. I'm 51 and I'm thinking it could be menopause related. Could you help me? Well, um, that is interesting. I'd obviously like a bit more detail, but uh, I'm suspicious this could be driven by the steroids. Ah. Ah. Um, if you put steroids on the chin and round the mouth, you can get a particular form of dermatitis that's caused by steroids. And it's called peri, meaning around oral, the mouth, mm -hmm. dermatitis. And the more you put them on, when you put them on, at first it gets better, quite dramatically, and then it gets worse again. And then if you stop them, it flares. So you're in a really difficult, vicious cycle. Yeah. But the treatment for this, I, I would say, is cut back on the steroids fast. I'd even just say stop them. Accept the fact that things will flare for a week, 10 days. Um, step up your moisturiser. So use a quality emollient. And if you don't know which one to choose, there's this fabulous product here, which um, you can buy over the counter, or if your prescriptions are free, your GP can prescribe it, the, the Aproderm range of emollients. Okay. And so you can then choose which one suits you best and which one you like to then to get larger supplies of that. But I would consider putting somebody who came to see me with this onto an oral tetracycline. They can work a treat, a bit like we do for acne. 
but they're working faster here and a bit better. So I think this is, could be peri or oral or peri or official dermatitis. It occasionally occurs around the eyes as well. Yeah. Stop the steroids. Right. Is a cortisone cream a steroid? It is. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. So hydrocortisone, yeah. um, betnovate, yumovate, yeah. dermovate, elecon, they're all steroids. Okay. okay. And they'd, all, well... they'd all initially dramatically help this, yes. but then make it worse. And I've seen people just build up the ladder, getting yeah. onto stronger and stronger steroids. It's a vicious cycle, Absolutely. Yeah. OK, well, right. Amanda, I hope that helps. OK. Let's know how you get on. Kathy's been in touch. Uh, she says, I've been suffering with eczema for the last six years on my elbows, eyelids, ears, and recently nostrils in and out. Mm. It's flaky, itchy, and starting to consume my life. I've been prescribed all sorts of, for my GP, from steroid creams and gels to olive oil, but nothing is working. What advice do you have? Well, actually, I don't put olive oil on the skin. Do you not? Great for cooking, yeah. <laughs> but it's got too high a ratio of oleic acid to linoleic acid, so it's actually a bit damaging to the skin. Most other vegetable oils are absolutely fine, but I wouldn't personally put olive oil neat onto the skin. Instead, I'd again go back to an emollient. Yes. Um, so I'd use a quality emollient. However, when I see somebody with eczema on the eyelids um, and perhaps around the nostrils, I'm, I'm oh, thinking so... contact allergic eczema. So I wonder whether some con uh, allergen that she's become con um, allergic to. It could be nail varnish. And you'd expect that to cause eczema around the, around the, the fingers and the cuticles. But it doesn't, because the skin's quite thick there. Yes. And your finger just touches your eyelid, and that's just enough to trigger an allergic reaction there. So I, I if I had somebody with that story, I would say they need to go to have some patch testing done to see what they could be allergic to. It could even be things in, in face wipes. Methyl isothiazolinone, it's a big name, but yeah. we shorten it to MI, is present, or used to be present in a lot of... Um, it's in fairy liquid, it's in shampoos, it's in baby wipes, right. um, and, and it's causing an epidemic of contact dermatitis. So it yeah. could be that, it could be nickel, it could be nail lacquer. There's a large list of possible okay. causes there. I'd have a low threshold for thinking about that. Mm -hmm. okay. But again, it needs plenty of emollients and probably using steroids properly. Okay, okay, so thanks. a patch test, perhaps, yeah, if there you we go, go to good luck with me. and ask good for luck, an allergy test. Um, Melissa says, how can I manage my redness and acne scars? I've been struggling with acne, redness and scarring for a good few years. I've tried AHAs, BHA and sensitive-based cleansers, but nothing seems to work. I'd love some advice on, skincare, on a skincare regime to help me feel confident in my own skin again. Gosh, this is a, a big topic, actually. Mm -hmm. um, we need a bit more time to go into this in more detail. Um, I'd like to get her onto a topical retinoid, something like adipalin. Um, but if her skin's already red, she may find that she can't tolerate that initially. So I'd go at this fairly gently. Um, something that's really caught my attention this year, and I think it's absolutely fascinating, and I'd probably suggest to her, is something mm -hmm. called Clini Soothe. I think we've got some here. Clini Soothe. Okay. This is a remarkable product. It's, I think every household should have some Clindy Soothe in oh, it, actually. Oh, well, if right. you're... Yeah, if I'm, I'm in. I'm, Rochelle's I'm already missing. ordering it I'm on Amazon. Right, tell it's, us a bit. It's then. 80 times stronger than bleach. What? Oh. 80? Yeah. It kills virtually every single known microorganism. And it is produced naturally by our immune system, by our white blood cells. So it's totally non-toxic to human and other animal cells but it kills bacteria, viruses and everything ah. else, and viruses and, and, and fungi and fungal spores. It also is brilliant for acne. You put it on twice a day. It's 99% water, but the active ingredient is this agent called hypochlorous. And you put it on your face twice a day, it doesn't irritate, and that, um, within a month, has made, can make dramatic differences to this sort of mild end of the spectrum. Mm. The other thing I think about... So, Clinny Soothe is, is something you can buy it over the counter. Uh, you can get it from the pharmacy. The other thing I think about is something like Effaclar Duo. Effaclar Duo Plus, a, a La Roche-Posay product. Um, that can be very effective for this. But if you were my patient, I would be talking to her about starting a retinoid. I'd be thinking about what sort of contraception she's on, because some mm -hmm. contraception makes this sort of acne worse. There's a, there's a big topic, I think, to about her diet. A lot of things to talk about. A lot of things. Okay. Be, it's, it's, it's hard to get it all from one picture. I know, exactly. Thank you. Uh, That's so insightful. Dr George, thank you so much for coming in. Lovely, Lovely to see, to see you. you, babe. Thank thank you. you. It's August too early to...